Purnasyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate So this is one of the greatest sutras of all time, the invocation to the Sri Ishopanishad. Isha means the first, and of course Upanishad means come close and sit down, <laughs> listen. So this first Upanishad, this original Upanishad, opens with a hymn to Aum or more properly, Aum. That Aum 
stands for Brahman. And Brahman is Purnam. Purnam means whole, complete, perfect. So Om, Brahman, is whole, complete and perfect. And because it is complete and whole, everything that comes from Brahman, such as this material world and all the living creatures, are also whole and complete. And because Brahman is whole, complete, and perfect, it is the complete balance. In other words, it is the same as or even more than the whole creation. So this is the opening verse of the first Upanishad. And it's meant to define and describe Aum. Because Aum is very important in the Vedas. Aum begins every Vedic mantra. Not only begins, also ends every Vedic mantra. So the topic of the Vedas as a whole is Aum or Brahman. So this is the point, and my Adi Guru brings this out in the uh, commentary that he wrote on this verse. Everything that is created by Brahman is whole and complete. Therefore, if we are feeling any unwholesome <laughs> uh, sensations or ideas, or if we feel incomplete in any way, that is not the fault of Brahman. That is our fault. It means that we have covered the completeness of our own self and hidden the basic complete nature of our real self with a false construction. And this is called upadi, or the theory of superimposition. That means the world is actually perfect. That means we are actually perfect. But because of ignorance, we have become attached to that which is incomplete and imperfect and not whole. So that is not the fault of God. You know, sometimes Christian theologists are stumped by this question. If God is perfect, how could God create a world that is full of imperfection and incompleteness? And they, they are stumped. They, they don't get it. <laughs> But the answer is, the world is perfect. It is complete, and so are we. But the problem is, we are looking in the wrong way. We're looking at things in terms of desire. And desire, by definition, means I am incomplete. I am imperfect. I need something more to complete me or to make me perfect, to make me happy, to make me whole. So this desire uh, is also known as Shankara. Shankara means a fabrication, something that's made up. It's not real, and it's not an original part of our self with a capital S but it is the basis of our small self, huh? with a small s, <laughs> the ego. The ego is always saying, I need this, I want that. I want to go here, I want to go there, I want to do this, I want, I want, I want. And of course, with the emphasis is on want, 
but the real subject there is I. And not the real I, but the false I. Because the real I is complete and perfect. How can we be missing anything? Only if we cover up part of the real I with something made up, something artificial, something fabricated, a desire. And this desire is predicated on the idea that I am not complete. I am not perfect. There is some future in which I get something that makes me complete and perfect. But you see, this is the false promise of Maya. Maya means that which is not. What is not? The future. This future that we desire, that we call into existence with our thoughts, on which we base the ego, that someday in the future, I will have everything I need to be complete, everything I need to be happy. But you see, that future never arrives. We are always in the present. And in the present, if we feel ourselves to be incomplete, even if we get what we want, it won't satisfy us. So the Ishupanishad is to remind us that actually we are created completely perfect, perfectly complete, <laughs> whole. Huh? And it's only because we take away something from that whole, we, we cover over the wholeness of ourself, that we're feeling some incompleteness, that we feel some need for something outside. So the whole process of self-realization is designed to remove this false covering, to penetrate through the layers of illusion and fabrication and ego, and to cognize or experience the real self. The real self is Brahman. There is no other. So when we realize our real self, we also realize the real self of everything. But this is not a self like an ego, separate and imperfect and incomplete. No, this is the complete whole, Brahman. So Brahman is not the kind of self, huh? Uh, self with a capital S is not the same kind of self as self with a small s, the ego, the mind. Not at all. We have to get used to the idea that there is really only one self, and that self is complete and whole, and this is the aim of the holy life. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.